Nuremberg is one of those famous German cities we've all heard about, but I had no idea what to expect. Since it's been around for about 950 years and was once described as the treasure chest of the German Empire, it's just brimming with history. But I'll spare you the cliches on just how wonderful it is and instead concentrate on just how much they love their food here. Get the city is steeped in history, but uh, clearly food is very important to you. Yes, food has always been very important to the Nürnbergers, it's especially, you know, the spicy food, the gingerbread cookies, and, uh, you know, Nürnberg, the Nürnbergers in the Middle Ages have been nicknamed for that as the pepper sex because their main, they were mainly dealing in uh, spicy and food. And you mentioned uh, ginger cookies. Yeah, the famous Lebkuchen. They are made of ginger, bread, uh, nuts, honey, and uh, it's the famous uh, and, and preferred food during Christmas period. So very sweet things are clearly very popular. Uh, what about meat? Well, especially pork. Pork is our first meat. We eat much pork and beef, marinated beef as sauerbraten, then of course poultry, but uh, especially pork. We eat a lot of lots of pork. Yeah, and the old sausage is pretty popular here too, isn't it? Yeah, yes, you mentioned it. <laughs> the, the sausages are the most famous. The Nuremberg sausages are the most famous sausages in the world, I think. And uh, they are called? The bratwurst. The bra the that is the famous bratwurst. bratwurst from here. Yes, yes. Specifically from here. The Nuremberg bratwurst, the small ones. Yeah, and, and they'd be serving them all day? Oh, they serve them from 10 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock in the evening, all day. You know a good place? Oh, yes, very close to here. The best one. Lead the way. Okay, we got there. We're in the right place, Gerd. The uh, smoke is rising from the ovens and there's a lovely smell out here. This is it. Yeah, you're perfectly right. This is it. This is one of the very few true and famous Bratwurst Küchen, the Bratwurst Häusle. Well, why, why do you think it is so famous here? Well, it depends uh, certainly on the quality of the owner of that house and also of the quality of the sausages, the material they are made of and the way they are uh, grilled on the oven. So uh, there are a few things very interesting on that Bratwurst history. And what is the history of this particular house here? Has it been here all the time? It has been here during uh, many years before the war, during the Middle Ages, but built straight against the wall of the church. Then the church was destroyed during wartime, and after the war, they rebuilt the little house a few meters away from the church. But despite that, the bratwurst still tastes the same as it did in the Middle Ages. You bet, they still taste the same. Let's try them. <laughs> okay. Well, Gert, my tour guide, he's decided to take things easy, and he sent me here to the kitchen to cook his lunch. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, but I'm lucky enough to have the owner here, Kai. He's here to help me. Kai, good to see you. Um, Hi. I, we, as we're um, cooking, I'd love you to tell me a little bit more about the bratwurst and why yours are so successful. Why are they so good? Well, our secret is freshness. We make them every day, starting at 6 o'clock in the morning till the afternoon. And everything that is left in the evening we put in vacuum packs or in cans to, the, to sell them over the street. Yes. So the next morning you come, you eat sausage here, you have the fresh ones. So they're always fresh sausages, nothing from the day before. Now, what fresh. about the meat? How important is it uh, for the cut of meat you use? Oh, this is one of the main things. We, all, we only use the shoulder and the ham of the pork, nothing else. I mean, so, that's the best bit. Nobody, in, in England, we wouldn't dream of using that for sausage. <laughs> well, most of my fellow restaurants also wouldn't do that, but we do it. So. I hope that's the reason we have the best product. Yeah, but is there a special uh, little recipe you have for the seasoning along with the meat? I mean, it's not just pure meat. You put something else in there, don't you? Yeah, there goes measury, salt and pepper inside. And then, of course, a couple of secret spices. Everybody has his own secret. We too, but of course I can't tell you. No, I thought you wouldn't. Right, now, how many sausages would somebody eat normally? Uh, Four or five for lunch or a bit more? Than well, that? the regular helping, I'd say, is eight. And if somebody's very hungry, we take 10 or 12, and then it goes in these heart shaped plates. Right, well, how, how am I doing here? I've, um, very well. They, they're done. Yeah, they are? Yeah, they are right, done. Already. So, I hope Gert, how many will Gert eat, do you think? He looks like as if he's got a good appetite. Shall I put on about uh, eight for him? Yeah. Right. He looks um, hungry. So how long does it take to cook one of these? I mean, we've only been here, what, less than a couple of minutes? Yeah. That's all it takes. Just a couple of minutes and they're ready. 
All right, well, we'll finish this lot off, and then uh, I think it'd be rather nice to go and eat some of these. How many would you, uh, would you sell of these sausages each day, on a good day? On a good day, I'd say three to five thousand. What? Three to five thousand pieces. Five thousand of these a day? A lot of drilling. <laughs> There's money in sausages, I tell you. My goodness. Good. Hand-cooked bratwurst by an Englishman. Doesn't sound right, does it? But they look good, eh? Oh, yeah, and I bet they taste great. <laughs> they look just perfect. Well, we have the best cuts of meat in these sausages, and, of course, you need the best accompaniment. What have we got here, Kai, to go with them? Well, this is homemade potato salad, this is sauerkraut, and this is horseradish. So I just uh, helped myself to a little bit of sauerkraut, which is a, it's a cabbage, isn't it? How is that prepared? Yes, it is. Uh, well, you take the cabbage, cut it, slice it, and then you boil it for like two or three hours with um, spices, a little bit of fat, sugar, and of course a li uh, little bit of white wine inside. And what about the potato salad? Uh, that looks really nice. How is that prepared? Uh, the potato salad, we're making big pots, like a hundred pound, and we boil the potatoes, peel them, and we slice it, and then goes salt and sugar, onions, vinegar inside, and this makes the special taste. But it's important to make a huge pot. If you make it at home in a small, like okay. two, two pounds, won't be the same. It doesn't taste the same. Help yourselves, uh, gentlemen. Thank and you. of course, we've got some horseradish here as well. Horseradish sauce, that's important. It's very spicy, very hot, but very good. I, I think I'll the try some of that. Oh, Hope it's gone on the table. Don't use too much. <laughs> I love it. No. I do love it. Well, this really does look delicious, and uh, I think we ought to stop talking now and tuck in. So, what do we say in Germany? Uh, we say Prost. 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 <laughs>